everything's getting smaller, isn't it? These sticks are much smaller than they used to be. Howdy doody dangly folks, it's Barry here. I hope you, you are well. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we are making a homemade Kit Kat. Yes, the delicious wafery chocolatey snack available most places around the world and in fact in some countries as we've done a taste test previously they do some absolutely bonkers flavours. Now this came about because I was rummaging through my silicon storage tub. That's how cool I am now. I've now got some silicon storage tubs and I found this. This is perfect for a Kit Kat. If you don't know what one is I'll quickly show you in a moment but this will give us the individual fingers. Uh, most commonly in, in the old days it was in fours but now as I was out in the supermarket yesterday twos seems to be the more interesting thing and they're smaller than these used to be so hopefully we can make them a bit more gourmet a bit more chunky and this happened this is this is the supermarket yesterday i'm feeling good about this one really? this is the sixth supermarket we've been in isn't it yeah and we're trying to get wafers <laughs> they ain't got it are they no you only ten p we've been in every single supermarket we've got every other cone you can think of ten p please <laughs> So I basically owe Chloe 10p. I took her all around all these supermarkets. She wasn't feeling very well, bless her. And they wanted to get those, those simple ones that look like a pack of card wafers. You could get them normally everywhere. Maybe it's a lockdown thing, but I legitimately went in six supermarkets and two other stores and could not find them at all. But instead of that, and to actually emphasize the homemade style Kit Kat anymore, for the first time ever, I'm actually gonna try and make my own homemade wafers. Oh yes. Oh yeah, but these sticks, everything's getting smaller, isn't it? These sticks are much smaller than they used to be. It does say Kit Kat on it. I'm not gonna go to that level, but hopefully, snap it down the middle. And it's basically a stack of wafers, which are actually held together with chocolate, surrounded by chocolate. So we can perfectly make this super simply. We can flavor it with so many things. So obviously this is chocolate orange, we'd use orange extract. We can even put orange extract in a wafer. <gasps> But I think I'm going to stick to vanilla. Actually, just as a backup, <laughs> Chloe did drop these on the supermarket floor. Um, this was the only thing that I could find as an alternative if this doesn't work. And it's actually what we're trying to replicate anyway. But they've got like a hazelnut cream inside. So this is basically what we're going to try and do. We're going to try and create this. We're not going to be able to get the grid pattern on it that like you get on standard wafer because I don't have a press. We're going to roll it out old school with a rolling pin. But this could actually work inside our moulds too. So we might do one of those as well. Kind of like a, a Nutella vibe. All right, so my vision in my mind of making these uh, was kind of like in a frying pan or something, but we are gonna bake them because we're not using a press. And we make a kind of dough which does take a few hours to set, which is good because then I can uh, walk the dogs. But first of all, to the appliance garage for the electric whisk. We're ready. All right, first thing we need is some sugar. Boom. And this, uh, with the random hole in it, because I think that's where the microwave hits it, is some butter that I've just pushed into the microwave through a ramekin sort of thing, just blast it for a little bit to soften it up. Smooth, creamy, addictive. And for a moment, it might feel like we're making a cake. Because inside this bowl now, we're gonna add some more familiar things like egg. Oh, I just got some dough on the camera. How long has that been there? Sorry about that. And as they're mainly sort of vanilla wafers, we are gonna put some vanilla extract in. This is my first time at the rodeo with uh, wafers, so let's just go vanilla. All right, so let's make it even more cakey now by adding flour, well at least that'll thicken it up and hopefully make it... <laughs> the uh, plain flour, and there is my baking powder. I'm just gonna randomly just scatter that around in there. Pass it for a sieve in three or four batches, folding it in each time as I go, as lump-free as possible. I'll get it all in there and I'll see you in a jiffy. That is proper tough now, but it's still a little bit wet, which is why when we refrigerate it, it should firm that butter up and hold it together into that dough. So, to the Ratmaster 3000. And there we go. In a bit, apparently, <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. This will be traditional thin wafers for our homemade gourmet Kit Kats. All right, guys. Um, we've got some time to kill. Do you fancy a walkies? I was just thinking to myself, if this does really work though, and we've got to take little baby steps, like little kitty catty steps, 
we're gonna make this cap purr, okay? So kind of like in Asia where you get those wasabi flavored ones where the chocolate is dyed green to enhance it, right? We could do our own version. You can let me know down below perhaps like any crazy flavor ideas you've got. Maybe we could do like a bacon one or maybe we could do a Biscoff one or a Ferrero Rocher one. The possibilities are endless, but let's just take baby kitty cat steps first to see if we could nail this. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna go walk the dogs on see you in a bit. Why is beef stew a bad password, Chloe? I don't know. Because it's not strong enough. <laughs> that is way, way too much than I need. So I'm probably gonna slice it into like eights. We wanna roll it out apparently. So it's super thin, almost to the point of it being transparent. And it does smell quite vanilla-y, but it also smells very buttery and looks a lot like butter. <laughs> Please work. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'll push it down a bit like this. It just feels like I'm making pastry. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah, that's still, <laughs> you really, really have to keep this floured. Oh my gosh. It's very temperamental. But the good thing is, I only need a very, very small amount. So I'm gonna focus on this middle section and get that, that is, that is really thin right there. Yeah, that's delicate, oh my gosh. Oh no, <laughs> no! You see it there? What do I do? Do I bake it like that and then slice it afterwards? Yeah, I think I will, just in case it expands or anything. And then I'll keep doing that with other bits. So let's jump to a, a baking tray that's covered, right, with a Barry, Slewis, Barry, Slewis, Barry Lewis non-slip mat and a few more that are equally as thin as this and just as much dusted in flour. As easy as that. <laughs> if you look at that, does that scream to you wafers? Yes. Oh, I love your confidence. Oven's preheated. In it goes, fingers crossed, for a massive, massive six minutes. I've not been this excited since my wedding day. All right, the time has just gone. It's been in there for a massive seven minutes in the end. Where are we going? They look like crackers. Yes, but if they had these patterns on... What, using would... the sausage cutter thing? Yeah. <laughs> then they wouldn't. They would have looked like... It's just because they've not got the patterns on. If the ones in the shop didn't have the patterns on, they would look like that. All right, cool. Well, I'm not going to let them cook anymore. They'll burn. Ah, that pan's hot. These things have just cooled down in a matter of seconds because they're so thin. I don't know if this has worked, but I'm going to get you, Mrs. B, to taste... Uh, ooh. Oh wow. <laughs> That's a wafer. Mm. Tastes just like it. That's a wet yeah, but it looks like the ugliest wafer in the world. Aw. You can hurt his feelings. Don't judge a don't, wafer by its don't cut. Don't judge a wafer by its cut. Okay. So now I'm gonna slice the wafer up into pieces so they'll fit into these slots and compartments, which is gonna be fun. Right folks, I'm having a bit of a nightmare here. <laughs> I've tried slicing it off camera and my worst nightmares are coming true. Um Basically, I think I'm gonna to have to bake another batch, which is not a problem. This is the sharpest knife I've got. They're very, very good. I've tried slicing it down fast. And because they're so light and airy, they crumble nicely, but I'm not getting <laughs> consistent shape on it. Right, I'm gonna bake another batch. I'm gonna cut them all into strips. You didn't see that. I'm gonna roll the dough out, get it into nice strips, like this. Look, I know I was gonna do the clicky thing and it suddenly appeared, but I just wanna show you this. By actually putting it onto my seal pat, oh, I can roll it possibly thinner than before. <laughs> and now I'm gonna slice it into rectangles on here that should fit. So these are some of those other wafers that I've cut to size that should give me the perfect size, if I just mark that about there. So that is the effort I've gone to, to make three teeny weeny wafers. <laughs> there we go folks, it looks like a tray of chips, but no, it is hopefully uh, some custom cut to size waffle sticks that will actually, I'm only gonna bake these for about five minutes, so they're not so golden this time. a hole in these gloves. This is B. Oh yeah. I forgot to tell you. I think there's a hole in the oven glove. Thanks mate. 
These have got a nice light, a couple of them have caught a teeny bit, but just, just starting to go slightly lightly golden on that. So we're happy with that. I think this has worked. And the ones that have joined together a teeny bit, I've now got some lines that whilst it's warm, I'll just part those. And hopefully we're gonna stack those wafers into this Kit Kat. So we're going for the four finger variety. So I've got nine there, bizarrely. So what I've created is this little NASA foil uh, separator tray, trademark, which is gonna hopefully separate the chocolate. We're gonna do one batch uh, with these ready-made wafers that have got the uh, chocolate spread. And I noticed that they don't quite fit in there. They're a little bit too wide. I cut them down to size. I then took a little bit off the top, like that top wafer like this, stack them on top. So there's my pile of them there, and they will slot in here. Now, obviously with my homemade wafers, I don't have the spread on just yet, so I'm gonna melt some chocolate, brush it in between, and hopefully they'll fit in the other four compartments. So here are my ones that I've just baked, uh, a little bit lighter in color, no ripples on them, but they are wafers, that's the most important thing. And by slicing them before baking them, they did hold their shape, and I think stacking them in about four, with chocolate in between, roughly gives me the same height as these ones. So let's get some melted chocolate on to fuse these together. It'll either be three or four high. We'll find out now. All right, folks, just some very quickly melted chocolate that I've got a pastry brush, and I'm just gonna spread that on there like so. Ugh. Chocolate is almost as good as super glue in terms of sticking things together. Half the walls in this house when we did the extension, the builder laughed at me. We, we actually joined them together with chocolate. Who's laughing now, huh? Right, so there we go, a little bit on the bottom one to wedge that on. And that is our homemade wafer stack done. <laughs> I've just got to do it three more times. We're going to have two different Kit Kats then. We've got the ready-made waffles already printed with the hazelnut spread on there, or our homemade smooth, non-printed ones, but rammed with homemade baked vanilla flavor. So this bit of foil, we can put chocolate on the edge as well to give it that raft effect that you get with a traditional Kit Kat. But first of all, we need a little bit of chocolate in all of these compartments before sticking these in there and then drenching it in the rest of it so it will submerge and fill all around the wafers. Let's go. My favorite way to melt chocolate is to take around about 75% of the total chocolate you're using and put it in a microwave safe bowl into small chunks. Um, I just use the one that we just made the uh, sauce with for the wafers. 30 second blast, every 30 seconds I'll give it a little stir, it shouldn't take long. And once we've got it nice and smooth, we'll dump in 25, I was gonna say 24, cheeky, uh, percent of the chocolate left over still whole and using the residual heat to melt it through. It kind of does like a cheat's temper, which is a good nightclub, you should go there. Hi, 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 hi. It's hot, that's how we want it. Nice and smooth, Augustus Gloop approved. Let's just shimmy that in like that. Let that heat melt it up and that'll be ready for our mold. Mold is such a weird name, isn't it? It can be like a lovely thing that encases and gives a chocolate identity, but can also mean something when you've left fruit out for far too long. So just like my favorite herb, we are gonna take our time. Uh, and instead of like going gun ho and pouring it in, we are gonna get a little teaspoon and just drizzle it into the bottom section, okay? Because you want a little base for our biscuits to sit on. Just make sure, just like when you sat on a beach, that the bottom is covered. It's a lot easier if you give it a little tap to settle it as well, make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Really, really important with that. When I went to old Cadbury World with the kids and Mrs. B, not only did we uh, go in some weird cinema, 4D cinema, a billion times, because about one of the only cool things that we enjoyed there, but we also learned that they like to tap the chocolate mold like that. Oh, no, not this thing. We need that. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick this in the freezer for about, I don't know, a few minutes just to get an initial tack to it so the biscuits sit on it and don't stick through the bottom, which will eventually be the top. You stay with the sweet corn, mate, all right? Cheers. That has literally been two minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see, but it is just tacky on there, and that's all we need is a little platform for our wafers to sit on. It's amazing because the wafers I was after, we used them when we made the giant Kit Kat before, which is for our wedding day, amazingly. Uh, and that would have made it so much harder if we couldn't get them back then. A lot of you are saying, when's the next uh, Super Size Guys giant food? Well, the whole thing with COVID, it does make things a little tricky at the moment. But we are actively talking about the next one. Oh, well, I might do one myself. I nearly did a giant mozzarella stick the other day, so I might have to do that for the time being. And there we go, ready for a good chocolate drenching, except 
I've forgotten one key element to separate the two rafts. Come with me and you'll be in a world of made up Kit Kats from homemade recipe. So we'll just get that about there. It might look like a lot, but by tapping it, see? It's finding its way into the groove. This is now going in the freezer, or you can put it in the fridge if you want, just to firm up, and we should then have our own homemade Kit Kats. Okay, folks, it has been about half an hour in the freezer, so they should uh, be nice and firmed up. This is a standard Kit Kat. In fact, there's two two-finger ones, so we've got a four-finger one for comparison. Let's get the other ones out of the moulds. Yeah, that's rock hard. <laughs> I won't be using that, but as you can see, it's giving me those two separate rafts. I can't remember which one's which. And also, if we stuck some little letters on this uh, bottom side, we probably could have made our own lettering on there. Uh, let's just see. Oh my God. <sighs> Uh, come on. Oh no. oh no, I broke it off. Well, I broke a finger off, <laughs> but it looks amazing. It's breaking as it's coming out of the mold. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, they're, they're, they look amazing though. We can get around this guys, don't worry. We, what we'll do is we'll chop off the edges and create another raft in a foil tray like this. All right, I can only see a couple where do you see the importance of tapping it down? That's where we just missed that gap. I thought I got most of them, but hey, make sure you do tap it down a lot. But what I've got is a piece of foil and I'm just gonna put a dollop of chocolate around about there. I'm gonna lift one, press it on, and this will be snapped off just at the end, okay? So we're sort of forming our own little raft like that, okay? So line it up properly. I'm gonna do the same to that, and then we can cut off any excess simply because it didn't come out the mold and I want it to look proper, okay? You don't have to do this sort of level. Okay, so after a little freeze uh, and a little trim, we have now got them on their own rafts with the standard Kit Kat in the middle. So hopefully we should be able to pick it up. Oh, yeah, and just snap it off the raft like this. Oh, I mean, it kind of defeats the point with the whole mold thing, but I just really wanted it to be like that. Now, I don't know which one this is. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. Look, this is my homemade one, because they're slightly chunkier, and this is the, you know, I guess, like neater, stacked, ready-made wafers. <laughs> Let's have a taste. I've just had to slice the standard Kit Kat as well. <laughs> you can see how that's the benefit of making it homemade, and of course we could have flavoured it as well, so many different ways. So if you do want me to make the crazy Kit Kat ideas, I will do that in a future video. Now I understand the process, and hopefully in that time I can get myself an actual wafer press as well. So I think they just look awesome, the, the bubbliness, and in the homemade biscuit one I did, it's sort of that airy yeah, bubbliness, if that, is that the word? I don't know, it's just, it's not just like a stodge of biscuit in both forms, it's nice stacks with the chocolate either side. Amazing, I'm super happy. A lot of work here. Could have just gone and bought some Kit Kats, but I'm really happy with this. Let's try the ready-made ones. Oh, really nice, melt in the mouth. Little bit of a Nutella vibe going on because of the hazelnut spread in between those wafers, which is amazing as its own. And then my own homemade ones. Mmm. Oh. It tastes like ice cream. I think it justifies it, the freshness, the chunkiness, there's just something quite wholesome about making it yourself, knowing what you're kind of putting into it rather than your standard one, which is way smaller. All the stuff in the shops are getting smaller and more expensive, so have it a go, and maybe at your next house party, if you do, send me a picture, I'd love to see it. And as I say, do let me know if you want to see me make some custom ones. For me, it's worth the effort, and these are my favorites. Mm. Oh, see ya. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Cyber's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Oh, one other side note. This was my latest attempt. I'm trying to nail homemade Maltesers. This is a meringue uh, with malted powder and malt extract in, which is very hard to get. Uh, and this is where I'm at. I got this one, which I thought, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Uh, we'll bake it and then dunk it in chocolate. And that plate has suddenly got loads of cracks down it. It could break at any moment. It's a work in progress, so uh, once I nail this, obviously you'll make a giant Malteser too, but I'm just trying to get it bang on, because there's a lot of bad recipes out there. So it's just a little ongoing thing I've been doing for the last three years of my life.